Hi, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another photography editing video. I'm yours, Jack. If you haven't been here before, thanks for watching and I'm glad you stopped by. What we're looking at today is the new, newly released, I should say, green screen wizard from my friend Ken, who is, pro is the uh, key programmer and owner and developer of the green screen wizard program. Now, why is this new? What makes this new and why is it so exciting? Well, Ken has never had a standalone version of Green Screen Wizard for the Mac. This is now a standalone version for the Mac. And you can use it on your Snow Leopard, on your Lion. And I don't know how much earlier the versions go. We may have to uh, talk to Ken again about this new version and get some more uh, updates on that part about, you know, how early you can load this. But I know for sure Snow Leopard and Lion, I know it works just fine. Now, what's in the new version? And what do I like already about it and what don't I like? Whenever I review a software package, you know, I'm going to pick out something I may not like about it. There's nothing wrong with the developer. I mean, everything seems to be working fine. I just uh, loaded it up here and have it, had it up for about 5 or 10 minutes just kind of clicking around to, to get the feel for it. But the first thing I don't like about it is I don't like this part of it right here where these windows move away from each other. Um, I like it to be more like the Windows version where everything seems to be encased in one program. Uh, this is almost like the old, um, you remember the old uh, Photoshop was before CS6 came out where, you know, your picture would be in the middle and the toolbars on the side. And I just don't like the real estate in, in the middle. Um, and I haven't really looked at the preferences or anything. I don't see any preferences up here about how to change anything. So I don't think there's any way to maybe change that out. But again, we can talk to Ken about that. Now, the program itself is very straightforward. What you do here is load up a foreground and load up a background. And what was nice here, I was looking at my foregrounds, is with the Mac version here, the standalone Mac version, I can open my selection up here. And I don't just have to go to my pictures folder here. If you scroll down to the bottom and click on photos under media, this is your iPhoto, folks. So it's very easy to get into iPhoto. And, you know, I just did a search up here for green because I know I have a lot of green screen uh, photographs I've taken over uh, time here. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of different ones in here. We'll just pick this one and just simply click open. And right away, it's going to put itself into your actual picture. Now, we're going to look at loading backgrounds. Just click on load background. And again, I don't know if there's any backgrounds in here. There's a couple here I was using for my show. So what I did, I actually came up here to pictures, and I have some backgrounds I downloaded. So I'm just going to grab something here. Um, let's just say that. Just grab the old Times Square, and now that's a backdrop. And again, it's very simple to use. Uh, it takes all the guesswork out of it. Uh, Ken designed it and wrote this program. And what's very interesting, if you go back uh, through some of my videos there on Justin TV, you'll find an interview I did with Ken, and uh, where he talks a lot about programming this stuff. But what's really interesting about this? You don't get that green spill around your shirt and stuff and around the face. Ken's programmed this uh, algorithm in here to clean all that spill up and take care of that and take it out of the way. So you don't have to worry about dealing with all that. The other thing I liked about there's this here happens to be the, the uh, Pro Studio Edition with the editor. Now there is a couple different versions you can look at. This is the most expensive version uh, that I'm testing out here. But you can go back and look at the other versions to see what else he has to offer. Uh, so there is some um, just different versions that do the same thing, but have some of the um, some uh, less editing abilities than what this full version does, the pro version. Now, if I click on pick adjustment in here, you can actually go through here and you can pick different adjustment styles in here. And what this would be is if you had a lot of different backgrounds, you could pick that. Or just a lot of different adjustments you can work with. So you can choose those. Picking a background, 
you can see here, it's going to throw a bunch of different backgrounds up here. And now you have a lot of different choices here, which one you would like to select. So let's say instead of Times Square, I want to use this brick wall. I just simply select it. Okay, that's not the, what I was thinking about. Let's see here. I'm sorry, the brick wall will be down here. There we go. And there it goes. So this is really nice with the Studio Edition. Um, in that if you're taking pictures with clients, you can have some backdrops in a folder and you can just bring it up and show them, hey, which which backdrop do you like? Boom, you're done. It's over. Uh, you have it. You can click right here, simply click on print. You can print this thing out in seconds. I also really like, and this is in the Windows versions also, the drop down menu. So I can set this picture up to really any size I want. Let's say if we want to change it to a 5x7, five 5x7 by seven, uh, five by seven vertical at 300 dpi. We'll just do this. Here's our 5x7. And you say, well, Jack, you know, you're half cut off there. What the heck? Let's click on adjustments. And we'll just move this over. Just click here and just pull it over. And you'll see you pull the foreground over. We'll just center him up a little bit there. And again, it'll recalibrate itself here and clean it back up. Not the best picture of myself. I'm sorry about that. It has text effects where you can add titles. You can have the titles on there. You can change the font sizes. A lot of different things you would expect to be able to do with text. It's all there. Here's text. Where you can move the text around. Here's overlays in case you want to do like a magazine cover. And I won't get into that now, but it is all built in there. So Ken wrote this program and it's kind of... Uh, Amazing how Ken looks at software. He's never written software for the Mac before, and this is an amazing, large, very big piece of software that he created. He did it from the ground up, brand new code. He had to learn how to program with it, and then write the write the code, write the programming for it. So, from ground up, this is written to be for the Mac. So it runs very good and it's very clean. But he duplicated the whole process in his mind from the Windows side. And built this new application for the Mac. And then there's the airbrush. And there's a lot of different editing capabilities in here. Again, I'm not going to go into all this because this is just more of a quick intro to show you that, hey, the Mac standalone version is ready. So, one, if you've been waiting to buy a Mac because you've been waiting for a standalone green screen program, Ken's ready for you. Go buy your new Mac. If you've been using the plugin, which I also have been using for a long time, I used the plugin for Photoshop Elements on the Mac, which Ken wrote, and he did what they call ported it over or made it work uh, for the Mac, and it works extremely well. I've been using that, and it works fine. So maybe you're already using that, but you said, man, I've been really wanting a standalone version because I want that feature uh, that Jack was just talking about, pick a background in the Studio Edition. And, you know, you can just pick whatever background you want and just select it. Maybe you want that uh, to show your clients. And you can see how easy it again that is to change. So, whatever you're looking for, I mean, Ken has it figured out. And Ken's a really great guy. I've been working with Ken um, basically as an affiliate with him for several years now. And uh, I've been using all of his programs. And um, Ken's been... Uh, Really, you know, really good supportive to the show, and I've been really, really supportive towards him. He's a great guy, and what I'm basically getting at, if you have any issues, you can email him. Uh, I've talked to him on the phone several occasions, so you can possibly even get him on the phone. And he has volunteered, and I don't know if he's going to come to the show or if we're going to record it or something, where he's going to go ahead and give us a demo of the software. So I am going to get a hold of him. I'm going to work on that uh, interview with him again with a new interview. And have him demo the software for us and, and give us the ins and outs. You know, the man wrote it, so he knows it much better than I do. So, folks, that's it. I just wanted to give you a quick, short introduction to the Green Screen Wizard standalone version for the Mac. It's ready, so go to greenscreenwizard.com. Now, remember, click on there. Click on my website, jackstechcorner.com, to go to Green Screen Wizard to purchase your new standalone version. And until we talk next time, as always, keep those shutters clicking, keep your editors editing, and I'll see you back here again for another Jack's Tech Corner very soon. Bye for now.